stand, if you would, for a moment, for reverence to read the Word of God, Luke chapter 18, verse number 1. Luke chapter number 18, and verse number 1 this morning. We'll be looking there in Luke 18, and beginning in verse number 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 8 this morning. And we've been preaching in the last few weeks on uh, different subjects. This week uh, we're going to do the same. We're going to be preaching this morning on the subject of prayer for a few moments if we can. The Bible tells us here in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray, not to faint. So he spoke it to this end by saying this, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. He would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning to thank you now, Lord, for this opportunity and privilege to open up the Word of God, your inspired, divine, and errant, and preserved Word. We are so grateful this morning for the Word of God. We are so grateful for the truth, Lord, that has made us free. We ask you now, Lord Jesus, this morning, you hide us behind the cross of Calvary for a few moments. Lift up thy holy Son, Jesus. I pray, Lord, Heavenly Father, that he might be seen and known. I pray, Lord, that this morning we might hear from on high, speak to our hearts, stir inside our souls, and do for us, Lord, what only you can. And may we give you all the glory, honor, and praise, for thou art worthy above all others. There is none beside thee that deserves any such thing. In Jesus' name we pray these things and ask them. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're looking here in Luke chapter 18, and I want you to notice really three things here in this passage. Of course, we see the continual, uh, we see the continual uh, petitioning of the woman here and the effect that it made on an unjust uh, king. Uh, but we find, our ruler rather, but we find here in the Word of God three things that I want you to see this morning. Of course, I want to preach to you on the subject of prayer, but let me read verse 1 to you one more time if I could. It says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Then if you'll notice in verse number 5, the Bible said, Yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then in verse 8 he said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, Shall he find faith on the earth? The subject of prayer. Uh, my dear friend, this morning, of course, God has given us, I believe, two tremendous aids in this Christian life, and that is prayer and the Word of God. I believe they are very close at hand one with another. Uh, this is our way of communicating with God and His way of communicating with us. And prayer, by the way, is the both. It's not just us communicating to God and with God. It's also about God communicating with us. It's not as important what we say to God, but it's more important what He has to say to us. And I hope we are listening as we pray. But sometimes we don't feel like praying. Let's just be honest. Humanly, sometimes we do not feel like it. There's times when we don't feel like praying. Uh, prayer is not uh, an easy course. Prayer is a laborious thing at times. Prayer uh, takes some work and some effort. It takes some time. Uh, it takes uh, some pouring out of the soul and of the mind and of the heart. Uh, prayer, my dear friend, is not always something that we feel like doing. But if there were ever a time that we need to pray, it's when we do not feel like it. When we, my dear friend, do not feel like praying, that is the time that we ought to pray the most. And we ought to pray until we do feel like it. 
That's the way we ought to pray. And that's when, no doubt, we ought to pray even more. But my dear friend, we don't go on what we feel like doing or don't feel like doing. I remember one time I was working with a co-worker and he asked me about uh, what we was doing and he hadn't been in the trade very long and he said, I don't know how you do this every day. How do you do this every day? How, how, do, you, how do you do that and how do you put a smile on your face and be able to do what you do? And I said, look, because I don't think about what I have to do. I just do it. I don't think about how I feel about it. I don't think about whether or not I want to. I don't ponder on what I have to do. I just do what I know should be done. I have a family at home. I have a wife. I have children. I have uh, food to put on the table. And I simply do not think about it. I simply just do it. I put my feelings aside and I do it. I said, do you think I want to come to work every day? No, I don't want to. If I sit around and pondered on it, I wouldn't want to. I probably wouldn't like to. But my dear friend, I don't worry about what I want to or what I like to. I do what I know I should. And prayer sometimes is the exact same way. My dear friend, we might not want to. We might not always like to. But we know we need to. And my dear friend, no doubt we need to pray. Our country needs to pray. Our churches need to pray. We need to pray. Our families need to pray. Prayer is an essential part of the Christian life. And that really applies, that same thing, that necessity applies to everything in life. Work, church, reading your Bible, we go on to any subjects in the same manner as that quote states. Let me say this first of all to you this morning, if I could, looking there in verse number one, the first part of it, he said, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray. That men might, uh, ought always rather, to pray. We ought to pray. Always. So he tells us here that we ought to always pray. This is the point of the thought for a moment. Men ought always to pray. The greatest problem we face is not unanswered prayer, people. My dear friend, the greatest problem we face is unoffered prayer. It's not our unanswered prayers. That's not our problem. Our problem is our unoffered prayers. Our problem is the lack of praying. Our problem, my dear friend, is the lack of petition. Our problem is the lack of asking. We have not. It's very simple. Because we ask not. That's what the Bible tells us. We have not because we ask not. And when we ask, we ask amiss. Consume it upon our own lives. That's what he said. The prayer that starts in heaven is the prayer that is heard in heaven. My dear friend, this morning, I promise you, if it is according to the promises of His Word, if you will meet the condition, God will grant yes. the promise when we petition Him. And so, my dear friend, this morning, it is the prayers that are started in heaven that begin there that are no doubt heard there. We can do more than pray after we pray. This is true, and we ought to. Prayer is no excuse for laziness this morning. Amen? We can do more than pray after we pray, but we can do nothing more than pray until we pray. It will be of none effect and of none, use, none, of none use if prayer is not what seasons the work that we do. They that labor, labor in vain. Lest the Lord build the house. And what? They're laboring in vain. My dear friend, and so my dear friend, this morning, prayer is an essential part of our life, and men ought always to pray. Do we have an attitude of prayer? Do we have a desire to pray? Do we have a longing to pray? Do we practice prayer? Secondly, real quickly, let me say to you, we find there in the latter part of verse number one, he says, and not to faint. Not only should men not all, not only should men always pray, not only uh, should they pray, but they also should not faint. Too often I've found that we pray, but when the answer does not come as quickly as we think it ought, we soon fade and faint. We take that as a no, or that God doesn't care, or that God isn't listening, or that our prayer isn't getting through. Too often when we pray in our lives, we are quick to faint. We're an impatient people living in an impatient world. 
We live in an instant world. We have instant mashed potatoes. We have instant gravy, right? We have uh, microwave popcorn. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, Taco Bell. And I heard they have a Taco Bell Express. I don't know how you got any faster, but nonetheless, <laughs> I mean, we have everything in an instant. And that's the way we think things are supposed to work. We walk to a light switch and we flip it on. And if the light doesn't come on, something's wrong. It needs to come on instantaneously, right? We turn on the hot water and we expect that hot water heater to give us some hot water like quickly. I mean, we're not, we're not uh, thinking about waiting, amen. We, we want it now. We want everything right here and right now. And we, my dear friend, because of this, I think, often in our prayer lives, faint quite easily. We give up quite easily. We should pray that it all depends on God. And it does. But we should work as if everything depends on us. And so we need to remember, my dear friend, that we ought not faint. We ought to pray, yes, but we ought not faint. We ought to continue in the work of God and continue, my dear friend, to bring things before the Lord and continue to believe that God is a rewarder of those, my dear friend, that diligently serve Him. Yeah. I want to say to you, my dear friend, this morning when trials come, don't bring your hands. Bend your knees. And trials will come. Trials do come. Trials are here. We ought not wring our hands about the trials, but we ought to bend our knees. I've thought much about this. Fear is something that everyone experiences from time to time. But let me tell you something about courage this morning. You know what courage is in the Christian life? Courage is fear that has said its prayers. Yeah. That is what courage is. And when we pray, and we call upon the Lord, and we trust Him, we lean upon the Lord, our fears will turn to courage. We will be courageous because, my dear friend, we have prayed, and we have given it to God, and we have trusted that God is more than enough, that He is sufficient, that His grace is more than enough to sustain us and to keep us. And my dear friend this morning, that He will take care of His own. God, not to faint. Then we look and see in verse 8, if you would real quickly there, He says, I tell you, that He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall He find faith on the earth? He asks us this question. Let me ask you a question. When we think of that, we think of that in a very broad spectrum. Let me ask you, when the Lord cometh, will He find you in the faith? Will He find faith in you, in your life? I understand salvation. I'm not talking about a, a lost salvation. There is, if you're truly born again, you can never lose what you have. My dear friend, if you have faith in what the Lord Jesus Christ done at Calvary and that He cleansed, can cleanse and save you and you have trusted Christ and Christ alone, then my dear friend, that is more than enough. But I'm talking about prayer this morning. Will He find faith in you, in your prayer life when He comes? When God comes, will He find faith on earth? James 1 and 6, let Him ask in faith. He says, nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. So when we come to God, we ought to ask in faith, nothing wavering. What is that? That's without a doubt, without being double-minded. Matter of fact, a couple of verses down, it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We quote that a lot about a lot of different things, but the subject and the context is in concerning prayer. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A man who will not fully trust in God. We will find the things that are unstable in our life, the instabilities that we have, is the areas wherein we lack faith. Think about it for a second. Where are, where are the areas in our lives that we have fears? It's a lack of faith. God said how many times did He say to His disciples? He said this. He said to them, He said, Oh, ye of little faith. He says, Why did you what? Why did you fear? Why did you doubt? All these different things in all these different places. Why did He say these things? Listen, my dear friend, He, he asked them, Why were you afraid? What was wrong? He said, Why did you doubt? Oh, ye of little faith. Faith. Faith alleviates fears. 
Now, there's nothing wrong with concerns this morning. We ought to all be concerned about each other. We ought to all be concerned about our families. We ought to all be concerned about our country. We ought to all be concerned about our world. We ought to all be concerned about our church. We ought to all be concerned about a lot of different things in life. But this should not make us weary. And this should not make us uh, weary. And this should not cause us to doubt and fear. There is a difference between the two. Concern will prompt you to pray. Fear will fill your heart with doubt. Have faith. Do we have faith this morning? Pray and doubt. And you will do without. Pray and believe and you will receive. There is a difference between the two. He tells us don't let a man think. He should receive anything. If he's going to doubt, he's going to be double-minded, don't let him think. If he's going to be like a wave tossed about, don't let him think. If he's going to waver, don't let him think. He should receive anything. He's not going to get anything with doubts. Prayer is not a ritual. It's not just some routine. It's not just some uh, uh, rehearsed words. It's not just some uh, rel uh, religious uh, uh, sacrament that we do. My dear friend, prayer is from the heart and prayer should be prayed according to God's will. And we shall receive, my dear friend, if we will pray accordingly and believe Him for what He has said in the Word of God. We will receive. Prayer is the Holy Spirit finding a desire in the heart of the Father and putting that desire in our hearts to return it to Him in the form of a request. Think about that. God puts things in our hearts. He prompts us to pray. We may not feel like it, but you know if you're a child of God, you feel the nudge many times to pray. You feel a drawing and a pulling and, and something inside that says, I ought to pray. Sometimes we don't do it, but we feel it. Why? That is God stirring in our heart. How many times, listen, I, if, if you had any prayer life in your life, how many times has the Lord laid someone on your heart? Right. You don't know why. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what kind of day they're having. You don't know what their difficulties are, but you can feel the need to pray for someone even specifically. That is God's way of aiding those in need. Prayer. What a wondrous thing. The Holy Spirit giving us a desire from the very heart of our Heavenly Father. Prayer truly is the greatest Christian asset and privilege that we have. It is a privilege to pray. Let me say this to you. Exercise that privilege. Exercise it. It is a privilege. I... I have always been affected by it. I've heard people say different things at different times, and I love testimonies. But Miss Angie Mitchell, she used to stand up at church from time to time during testimonial services, and every time, without fail, it wasn't a ritual, or it wasn't a routine. This is how she felt, and this was in her heart. Tears flowing down her face. She would say, I get come to church. I get to pray. I get to read my Bible. I don't have to. I get to. She said. Tears flowing down her face. She had a heart of gratitude. A wealth of thanksgiving. She seen the gifts that God had given us for what they really were. Yes. Privilege. We are privileged. We are privileged children of the King. We serve a God that has and owns everything. We serve a God that has an answer to all things. We serve a God that is able to take care of anything. We have a privilege in prayer. We ought to exercise it. We ought to use it while we still can. 
pray. My brother, 